Our program tonight is about Cypress Creek. You may or may not know that there's a big program going on here called the Cypress Creek Watershed Program. It's funded uh, by several funding sources and it, it goes to the Meadows Center for the Water and the Environment at, at Texas State University. And then um, our speaker tonight, Nick Dornag, is the coordinator of the project and he's gonna tell us all about it. So let's give a good Wimberley Lions greeting to Nick Dornack. My name is Nick Dornack and I am uh, the uh, Director of Watershed Services uh, for the Meadows Center for Water and the Environment at Texas State University. I am so happy to be working on the Cypress Creek Project. For the past six years I've been working on a watershed project in Plum Creek which starts in Kyle and flows down through Lockhart and into the San Marcos River and uh, the opportunity just worked out to move into the Meadows Center and begin to work on the Cypress project and help develop the implementation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of this project, a little bit about what we're doing now, and hopefully have a little bit of time if you have any questions that we can answer some of those. So the uh, Cypress Creek project is, uh, is centered around this watershed protection plan and uh, the whole process started a little over 10 years ago and uh, there were a lot of folks over the years between Wormley Valley Watershed Association, uh, the Meadow Center for Water and the Environment, the city of Wimberley, the city of Wood Creek, Hayes County, um, coming together to make this project work. So for folks that aren't familiar, this slide shows the entire Cypress Creek watershed. Uh, but the wet part of Cypress Creek is just right down there in the very bottom, starting at Jacob's Well. So this is the entire watershed. So essentially any rain that falls or spring that emits out of any portion of this area um, would ultimately either be consumed or flow through Cypress Creek and on down into the Blanco River where confluence is below downtown Weberly. But the main area we're concerned with here is Jacob's Well on down. So we have developed a watershed protection plan to do that. A watershed protection plan is uh, it's a non-regulatory approach to protecting watersheds. And this really came about uh, back in 2000, Cypress Creek, uh, during some routine monitoring done by our state's environmental agency, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, found low dissolved oxygen levels. Um, there was also several periods in subsequent years where the creek stopped flowing. So a group of stakeholders got together and decided that we needed to do something about that. Came up with the first watershed protection plan uh, in the state of Texas that was accepted by the Environmental Protection Agency as a preventative watershed protection plan. There are watershed protection plans around various parts of the state. Typically those come about as streams become impaired, typically for things like bacteria, high bacteria levels and things like that. Well, in general, the health of Cypress Creek at the time of the development of this plan was relatively good compared to most streams, but the concern for growth and those impacts from growth was the impetus for developing a preemptive approach. So let's practice some upstream medicine on Cypress Creek and try to keep it clean, clear, and flowing rather than reacting to problems down the road. So uh, the TCEQ uh, decided uh, to help fund this project to get it going to develop a watershed protection plan with a grant. And um, after that process was done and the process was vetted and we worked with our, our stakeholders and the local communities here to develop that plan, uh, we have now begun implementation of the plan, which is what I'm going to talk about a little bit tonight. And uh, we are currently just wrapping up year two of implementation of the Cypress Creek Watershed Protection Plan, and we've actually applied for funding for years four through six. We've actually got a couple more years left on our current grant, and um, the primary effort that we are trying to do with the Meadow Center and with our partners is to develop activities and demonstrate ways to prevent pollution and protect flow in 
take as well. So uh, we are in the process of developing things like low impact development uh, demonstration projects. And I'll talk to you about some of those, uh, looking at ways to improve decision making for the community leaders, your elected leaders, what can we do, how will our, impact, how will our decisions impact water quality in Cypress Creek, how will it impact flow. Outreach and education is critical. We work with lots of different groups from master naturalists to um, high schools to develop educational programs uh, for youth and adults and also engage with groups like you to find out ways that we can work together uh, to improve and protect Cypress Creek, improve water quality and protect Cypress Creek. Uh, finally, as a key component of this, we have to know how we're doing. So we have an extensive monitoring network, a water quality monitoring network, where we look at multiple sites along Cypress Creek, as well as in the Blanco River uh, every three months. And we have funding for that to continue for the next several years. So we can always go back to how water quality is looking to see how we're doing. That's the real test. And uh, that's a critical component. So, I'm going to kind of flip through a couple of these slides quickly because we're kind of limited on time. I wanted to talk to just a couple of things that we're looking for. And we look at Cypress Creek and the potential pollutants in Cypress Creek. We look at nitrogen, kind of things that run off from uh, fertilizers and things like that, uh, from uh, Manure can have nitrogen in it as well. There's multiple sources of, of manure in Cypress Creek, quite a bit actually. Everything from pets to livestock to humans. Uh, if you've got failing septic systems or uh, wastewater plants and all these kind of things that can, can be around in any, any watershed. So those are places where some of those pollutants might come in. Uh, low dissolved oxygen. There's some natural uh, areas in Cypress Creek we've been noticing low dissolved oxygen around Blue Hole. Um, trying to kind of get our hands around, our head around why that's happening. Uh, oil and grease is something that comes as uh, sewer systems uh, are not, uh, don't have capacity to handle some of those kinds of things. Also can run off from parking lots. So uh, finally impervious cover. These are the kind of things uh, when we build new parking lots and build new roads and these kinds of things, uh, water or does not have a chance to infiltrate and uh, it will, if you've got an impervious surface, it's going to run off very quickly and carry everything it's got with it right into the creek. That's how storm systems are typically designed to do. So we're trying to make smarter storm systems here in Wimberley. And I'll talk to you about one project we're going to be doing in downtown Wimberley, hopefully in the next year. So our current project, we have a little over $800,000 in federal funding. This funds uh, engineers, this funds Meadow staff, this funds primarily a lot of the infrastructure that we're putting on in the ground, or putting on the ground. Uh, the partner contribution, the critical part about this is that we get about $800,000 through this uh, Federal Clean Water Act grant, but this is not free money. We have to match it with local funds. So we have about 500 plus thousand dollars in local funding that comes from this. And very, a large chunk of that comes from volunteer time that we collect from our partners, or staff time from Wimberley City staff and Wood Creek City staff. Um, so Frank, I don't know, were we getting Lions Club? We were getting Lions Club reports on any activities in the watershed that can be counted toward this. So your, your efforts can contribute to protecting Cypress Creek uh, by your volunteer time. There's a value for that time. So this is why I wanted to show this slide. But uh, our current project is funded through February 2020. The components of the project, the implementation project, are structural BMPs. BMPs is a, is a little acronym we use quite often, stands for best management practices. So best management practices, what is the best available technology? What is the industry standard? How can we do things better? Structural BMPs are things that we actually put on the ground. Non-structural BMPs are things like making better ordinances for your cities and your county, uh, to whatever extent we can do ordinances in the county, at a county level. Uh, we are working on that right now with Wood Creek reviewing their current ordinance, and we'll be doing that same uh, approach with Wimberley as well. 
to see what we can make improvements there. Source water protection, uh, there is an effort going on right now to try to establish a groundwater uh, protection zone around Jacobs Well, which I think will be really important to protect that source water as we look at uh, Wood Creek growing, developing in that area and those, those water supply wells out there. There's a direct correlation when those wells get turned on as to how much water is coming out of Jacobs Well. So making sure that uh, we're doing this right and doing this uh, correctly to both encourage the kind of growth that is that communities need to thrive while also protecting those key resources like Jacobs Well, Blue Hole, and Cypress Creek that provide the identity for your community. So finding that balance is the real difficult component, I think, as, as your elected officials and, and city staff and managers have to make these decisions and balance those out. That's where we come in and try to help guide that process. Finally, the research and monitoring that I discussed. I have a, this is just a map showing some of the sites on Cypress Creek. We monitor starting in Jake as well. We're adding in two new sites near Wood Creek, one near Campion Judea, and uh, one at Cypress Creek and Wood Creek Drive. Those will be two new sites we'll be monitoring this fall and into the future. Uh, we also monitor Blue Hole, downtown Wimberley, and at the confluence of the Blanco. So, with our current grant, we actually also received some funding to do some groundwater testing and groundwater wells because of that interconnected nature of this watershed, the groundwater and surface water can interact quite readily. The karst geology, the areas where water quickly seeps underground that's on the surface, that can have big impacts on, on Jacob's Well and then on Cypress Creek. So we're going to be monitoring several groundwater wells in the area as well to see how the water quality and water volume changes uh, relate to each other. And, uh, and find and help to kind of develop this conversation around protecting groundwater as a means of ensuring your surface water resources like Cypress Creek. So uh, one of the big concerns that we see in Cypress and that's been discussed quite a bit has been uh, increasing E. coli levels in downtown. Uh, this slide here shows uh, from 1996 or so, through the end of 2017, and the black line is the trend line showing E. coli levels measured in downtown Wimberley and Cypress Creek. The little yellow line, greenish yellow line that goes straight across there, a little above 100 at 126, that is the state's contact recreation standard for E. coli bacteria. That stands at 126 colonies per 100 milliliter sample. So below 126 colonies in your water sample means that the water is, or the, the source is protective of contact recreation, that there's minimal chance for things like gastrointestinal illness if you happen to ingest the water or coming, you know, heavy, heavy contact with the water. Above that level, there's a much greater chance for that. So that establishes a standard for contact recreation in Texas streams. Actually, somewhere around 40% of Texas streams or more, maybe 60, are now exceeding that standard regularly. for having big problems with E. coli runoff. So this is downtown Wembley, Cypress Creek. And you see, uh, starting back in 2004 or so, we started exceeding that standard pretty regularly here in Cypress Creek. So we want to be bringing that down. And uh, there's been discussion uh, with regard to septic systems. Uh, we've looked at other sources. There's uh, urban wildlife is actually a pretty significant source, potentially, of bacteria. Uh, we even had some livestock hits show up uh, when we did a very brief bacterial source tracking study. So. Uh, we're going to be continuing to look at that and looking at ways to bring down the E. coli level in downtown. In other parts of Cyprus, it's not quite as, as dire as it is in downtown, but uh, you know that is this is an area that we're really concerned about where there's a lot of interaction with the creek, especially in the community. So 
I want to show you a few of the tools that we're going to be incorporating to deal with those bacteria trends and um, other drivers. So, just to reiterate before I show you some pictures here of some of the things that we're putting on the ground, we'll take some questions. Uh, I just wanted to give some thoughts and drivers of water quality, some things that you can think about as you hear your city council making decisions or as you make your own personal decisions if you're a business owner, things that you're doing, declining groundwater levels. What are the things that you're doing that might contribute to groundwater levels or what are the things your community is doing? So it's very important that, uh, you know, clearly less pumping means being more productive or more protective of groundwater. So how can we find ways to have to pump less? How can we use less potable water for the things we don't need it for? How can we use the right water for the right use? And that falls into this concept of a one water concept where we are doing things like collecting rainwater to flush toilets rather than pumping water out of the ground to flush toilets. That makes sense. Um, we can use reclaimed reuse water to irrigate lawns and landscapes, soccer fields, athletic fields, those kinds of things. Um, so reducing that demand for potable groundwater is going to be really critical in the Cypress Creek watershed. And how can we do that? How can you do that? Uh, drought, clearly, we know can have some pretty severe impacts. Uh, one thing we can do is grow smarter. So growth and development, how can we grow smarter? Um, that means doing things like when we're putting in these sidewalks, new parking lots, new roads, let's find ways to incorporate better technologies so that we aren't polluting the creek when we have storms and we're washing off all of these things, all these nutrients that we're putting on the ground, fertilizers, oil and grease that fall out of the cars and they dump out of the cars and, uh, and uh, picking up after our pets. Those are some big things. So let me show you a few things we'll have on the ground. Uh, this is over here at the um, Patsy Glen Refuge. We put in, a, we had a workshop and actually installed a rainwater collection system there that will be irrigating plants at the refuge. Uh, we have rainwater collection tanks going in. Uh, we just had a uh, a 30,000 gallon tank delivered to the Wimberley Valley Watershed Association. Um, that tank is actually going to be converted to potable use. So we're going to be collecting water uh, out there and using it for potable uh, water with the filtration system. We've put on Hayes County, helped, uh, I think, contributed $20,000 to help put a rainwater tank over at the Precinct 3 facility. Uh, we were put in one just this last week at the Wood Creek Golf Course. So we've got rainwater going up uh, more and more, as well as uh, Blue Hole. We put in a new cistern out there at Blue Hole at the pavilion. So rainwater harvesting is great because again, you can collect that water and rather than letting it run off into, across the field and picking up manure and nutrients and all those things, uh, we can stop it, slow it down, use it to, for flushing toilets, for irrigating later. So rainwater collection is a great way, a very visible way to um, protect your watershed. Rain gardens are another approach that we can do. These are areas that catch stormwater runoff and actually uh, filter it through a, a media, an engineered media very often. And uh, again, this is more about slowing water down. Water that moves really fast makes flooded waterways and polluted waterways. So slowing water down, let nature do its work. A rain garden is just an engineered landscaping area where we collect water and it runs through a system to take out nutrients, take out bacteria, take out sun. Permeable pavers. I don't have the pictures here, but it will be out in our Cypress Creek newsletter. Uh, we have put in uh, we did several trail improvements out of Blue Hole. I think somewhere around three or four hundred yards of trail improvements with permeable pavers. So instead of putting in plain old sidewalks and things like that, that uh, just water will run right off of, or granite that will get washed away. We put in permeable pavers that will actually help treat water that runs across and slow it down and treat it before it runs off into Cypress Creek. So we have these in Blue Hole, and we're about to uh, retrofit a couple of spaces in their parking lot with some pavers as well. So the handicapped spaces, I think, at Blue Hole will be uh, receiving permeable pavers this fall. So. Just to leave you with, the, um, there are a lot of things that we can do 
if we think smarter and think about investing now in our future and what what we're going to leave for this community what will this community look like in 10 15 30 50 years uh, are we going to invest in infrastructure of the 20th century are we going to look at things and learn from our mistakes some of the things we've done that have contributed to some of the massive losses loss of life loss of property and floods we can do a lot of things we've learned a lot from those and uh, the Meadow Center is a great institution. I've, I've only been there a short time, but I've known the folks for a very long time. Uh, I think we have great vision there to see this more for the Hill Country, to do, do things better, do things smarter, and uh, protect these beautiful streams that make the Hill Country so unique. They make a community like Wimberley that I love personally and that we want to protect and uh, I think we can do that, and we can do it with you, the Lions Club. And uh, there's some great ways you can do that. You can become a member of the Texas Stream Team, and uh, you can also that means you can be trained to be a water monitor, and we can teach you how to do that. We also have some great opportunities for cleanup events and those kinds of things. So we can talk about that, and I'll take any questions. Maybe I have a couple minutes for questions. So thank you very much. in parts topography and water. Okay. Areas. Which um, different aquifers are you talking about? What does Blue Hole, which, is that the Edwards or is the Trinity? What is the... the Blue, Blue Hole is, is the area um, right there north of downtown on Cypress Creek. So that is um, ultimately it's the expression of the Cow Creek Aquifer, which is the source of Jacob's Well. So Jacob's Well springs from the Cow Creek Aquifer, which is part of the Trinity Aquifer. Water comes out of Jacob's Well and flows down through Cypress Creek. The majority of flow in Cypress Creek comes from Jacob's Well, so Blue Creek is just that part of Cypress Creek that we call Blue Hole. Yes, is your organization the same one that does water testing for individuals up uh, in Texas State? We can absolutely do water testing for individuals. If uh, you're looking at surface water sampling, we can do that. You can contact myself. We have a, a great staff with the Texas Stream Team that can come out and do that. If it's a personal sample, you have to pay for it. Uh, there's also a great group that we work with called the Texas Well Owner Network for those folks with um, wells that they're interested in looking at water quality. Uh, the Well Owner Network provides uh, testing and those kinds of things as well. But we could do well testing as well. What were the impact of the two water crabs situations that we have here at Neville? Can you tell me which water crabs are one out in Ridgewood near you and the one in Deep Moor Ridge? Deep Moor Ridge up by Saddle Ridge. Right. Well, I will tell you, as far as, I'm not, I can't, I'm not sure how connected the situation is with Needmore. With EP, the current thinking is that uh, those wells uh, out on 3237 are down dip of a fault zone uh, below Jacob's well, so that there's the hydrologic connection between Jacob's well and the source of Cypress Creek there and those wells that are going in for EP, or potentially going in for EP, that there's not a lot of hydrologic connection. But I think the problem with that EP permit is that we're still trying to understand the hydrologic connection, and it's not well understood enough. So the permit, I'll just give you this one little bit. I, I've read the permit that the Hastrony, or the Barton Springs Edwards Aquifer Conservation District has for the EP, uh, wells and it's written in phases to where if the permit was granted like it's written EP could pump a little bit and they'd have to check some surrounding wells to find out if it was drawn out before they could go to a higher level of pumping I feel like that's something that was uh, that was that's the initial stab at trying to address this situation it's going to contest the case and we'll see how that all plays out 
I don't, I don't think that the hydrologic connection between EP and Jacob's Well is greatly understood, but it is the same aquifer, I will tell you that. Well, Lisa wanted to ask you, and then I got a question. Okay, yeah. well, go ahead. Go ahead. Use the mic. Right oh, go ahead. Okay, well, what I want to know is, um, are the E. coli levels at Blue Hole, how elevated are they? Yeah. Okay. E. coli levels at Blue Hole. I think I had that, actually, after this. Yeah, we typically, typically, E. coli at Blue Hole is below that 126 standard. Okay. Typically, we have relatively good water quality at Blue Hole with the exception of dissolved oxygen, which is not good for aquatic life. Right. So. Well, we, we've got a baptism coming up later this <laughs> Well, make sure y'all splash around a lot. That does tend to help add oxygen to the water. Okay. No, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the, the, the size. All right, maybe we have another question. Here we go. Yeah. Nick, you talked just briefly about the groundwater modeling that you're going to be starting to do and looking at the correlation and the groundwater measurements uh, as well as the impact that it's going to have on the Jacobs Well and Cypress Creek. Right. Right. Okay. Can you tell us, because there are different areas of the Trinity Aquifer, and you've alluded to a few of those, but is it the intent as part of this modeling and study to try to draw some more distinctions about the aquifer and the different levels and where, you know, the recharge and the impact is actually occurring? Yes. <laughs> Easy question. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Yes, we are trying to understand it better, and uh, thank, thanks to uh, Waterloo Valley Watershed Association, Hayes Chain Groundwater Conservation District, I think uh, we're, we've got some really great minds working on that right now. So uh, I know that we'll be represented on the stakeholder committee, and um, I've done a little groundwater work myself in the past, uh, but there's some much more brainiac hydrologists working on that than uh, uh, so, so we'll we'll try to help understand that. I think we're trying to, to figure out the correlations and uh, really, again, with this plan, with the, with developing the plan and then implementing the plan, we're trying to get things that are sustainable into the future. Uh, we don't want band aids. We want you know the, the real. We want to be doing the kind of therapy that we need for the community as well as the watershed that's going to serve it well over a long period of time. So this is all part of it the research and the interaction and the implementation. Maybe one more question? If not, okay. The bat population under the bridge there at Cypress Creek in town, does that affect the quality of the water? Well, it sure affects the quality of the air around there, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, there, there is significant deposits of guano there. I've seen it, and so uh, how much bat guano is contributing to bacteria right below the creek? I think that's something that we're going to have to continue to study. I think uh, there's been projects on the upper Guadalupe River that they've done in Kerrville to actually um, put up netting for birds to keep birds from nesting under portions of uh, the river or under, under portions of a bridge that was contributing into the river. Uh, it would be great if we could get those bats a new home, I would say, uh, from a water quality perspective. I don't know how that would fly in the whole community. Um, I don't know if, if we can get a few Lions Club members with some caulk guns when the bats fly south. Um, might be a good idea. I'm sure it contributes some, uh, to the, the degree to which I'm not sure. But thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.